Namaste, greetings. Today, we bring you another short documentary. It's a documentary about how India tested its nuclear bomb. Yes, you are correct. The Pokhran 2 series, where India tested five nuclear bombs and was inducted officially into the nuclear club in the 21st century. Since independence, India had been wanting to join this elite group of the nuclear tested countries and had been planning for the nuclear bomb testing. The first test, also known as the Pokhran 1, or code named as Smiling Buddha, took place on 18th May 1947 under the then leadership of Prime Minister Indira Gandhi. But this operation did not officially induct India into this elite group of countries which had officially tested their nuclear bombs. So later on, on May 1998, the officially India was inducted into this nuclear club after the second test, which is today known as Pokhran 2. Both the tests, Pokhran 1 and Pokhran 2, took place at the Pokhran test range in Rajasthan. The, the, the tests happened at Pokhran. Pokhran 1 and Pokhran 2 were both tested at Pokhran. Pokhran is a town and municipality located in the Jaisalmer district of the state of Rajasthan in India. Pokhran is located about 112 kilometers east of Jaisalmer city 172 kilometers northwest of Jodhpur and 225 kilometers south of Bikaner by road. But the Pokhran test range is located 45 kilometers northwest of Pokhran town and 4 kilometers north of Khetolai village. There were a total of 5 bombs which were detonated in a series of 2 tests. The tests were conducted on 11th May and 13th May 1989 in the Pokhran 2 series. These nuclear bombs were developed at the Bhabha Atomic Research Center or BARC in Bombay and by three laboratories of DRDO which is known as Defense Research Development Organization. We shall now be talking about the key scientists involved in the Pokhran 2 test. One by one, we shall be going through it. The first and the foremost is Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, who was then the scientific advisor to the Prime Minister and the head of DRDO, which is known as Defense Research Development Organization. Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam later on became the 11th President of India. Next is Dr. R. Chidambaram, who was then the chairman of the Atomic Energy Commission. He later on became the second principal scientific advisor to the government of India from 2002 to 2018. Next is Dr. K. Santhanam, who was the director and was in charge of the test site preparation. Some of the other key scientists involved were as follows as shown on the screen. Now back to talking about the bombs which were tested. There were a total of five bombs as already told before. Now these bombs were named as Shakti 1, Shakti 2, Shakti 3, Shakti 4 and Shakti 5. We shall now talk about the general information about the bombs. Shakti 1 is told to be a thermonuclear device. Shakti 2 is told to be a plutonium implosion device. Shakti 3 is told to be a linear implosion device. Shakti 4 is told to be an experimental device, while Shakti 5 does not have much information regarding it. We shall now be talking about, in general, what is a thermonuclear device, what is a plutonium implosion device. So what is a 
thermonuclear device as stated before because Shakti 1 is told to be a thermonuclear device. So a thermonuclear device in general terms refers to a, a device which is or a bomb which is a hydrogen bomb commonly known as. It is a second generation bomb and it has greater destructive powers than the first one. Next, we, are, we will be talking about the plutonium implosion device. So what is a plutonium implosion device in general terms? It refers to a device which uses the design of plutonium fission. So here fission meaning division. And such bombs were used during the bombing of Nagasaki and Hiroshima by US. So the plutonium implosion devices were used during the bombing of Nagasaki and Hiroshima in 1945. Next, we shall be talking about how did India test its nuclear bomb. The fact was that India had to test its nuclear bomb without the knowledge of USA or United States of America at that point of time. Now, the Indian intelligence knew that the US spy satellites had been deployed who were detecting the test since 1995 and had been sending information back in the back in US. So, a small group of scientists and the army had done extensive planning. The 58th Engineer Regiment, the Indian Army Corps of Engineers, was commissioned to prepare the test site to avoid detection by the United States spy satellites. Since 1995, the 58th Engineer Regiment had learned how to avoid satellite detection. A small group of science, senior scientists were involved in the detonation process, which took place on 11th May and 13th May. Now, all this process ha happened in complete secrecy and all scientists were required to wear army uniforms so as not to be detected in the spy satellite images. Now, how did the army and the scientists work? So, work was mostly done at night. And after the work was done, all equipments were returned to their original places. So it could be shown that there was no shifting of equipment. The bomb shafts which were dug, it was dug under camouflage netting. And once that dug out sand, it was shaped like dunes. The cables, which were used for sensors, were covered with sand and concealed with using native vegetation. Scientists traveled to destinations other than Pokhran under pseudonyms and were then transported by the army. Technical staff at the test range wore military uniforms to prevent detection in satellite images. Now the final preparation for the test took place on the 10th of May and the following days. On 11th May, the first series one done and then the second one, 13th May. Now these bombs were placed in shafts which had already been dug. So the shaft had code names. So each code name was as White House, Taj Mahal, and Kumbhakaran. Now these shafts were L-shaped with a horizontal chamber for the test device. So how did the test happen? So on the 13th of May, which was the second test happened, it was initiated by Dr. K. Santhanam of DRDO, who was, the, who was the in charge of the test site preparation. So, Dr. K. Santhanam gave two keys that activated the test countdown to Dr. M. Vasudev, who was the range safety officer, who was responsible for verifying that all test indicators were normal. After checking all the indicators that it was normal, Dr. M. Vasudev gave the key each to a representative of BARC, Bhab Atomic Research Center and the RDO, Defense Research Development Organization, who unlocked the countdown system together. At 3.45 p.m. exactly, all the three devices were detonated. After the board the test on 11th May and 13th May, on the very evening of 13th May, after the Pokhran 2 series was conducted successfully, uh, a press meeting was held at the Prime Minister's residence in New Delhi, where then Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee made a press statement announcing the success of 
पोखरान टू सीरीज टुडे एट 15:45 फाइव आवर्स इंडिया कंडक्टेड थ्री अंडरग्राउंड न्यूक्लियर टेस्ट इन द पोखरान रेंज these tests conducted today were with a fission device a low yield device and a thermonuclear device the major yields are in line with expected values measurements have also confirmed that there was no release of radioactivity into the atmosphere these were contained explosions like the experiment conducted in may 1974 i warmly congratulate the scientists and engineers who have carried out these successful tests so this was a brief insight on how india tested its nuclear bomb and the pokhran 2 series and how india officially got inducted into the nuclear bomb tested country We hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much. We'll meet again later. Thank you very much for watching this documentary. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video. Enjoy the last minute views of the ocean. And goodbye. Goodbye.